We have created the base plate for our side plate, but now we need to add holes to it so we can use it for mounting things to. On Symbotics, we add axle supports on either side of the side plate. These supports are bolted to the side plate, and the wheel axles are supported by them. The support on the inside of the side plate is slotted down, so we can unbolt the axle and lower the wheel out of the frame to change the wheel quickly in competition. Instead of redrawing the holes to mount the supports to for every axle, we will create a block in a sketch to repeat the same hole pattern. A block sketch is used to import into different parts and use the entities from it to add features to the different part. We would normally use the hole wizard for these types of holes in a part. However, we cannot add blocks to the hole wizard sketches. To make a block, we must first make a sketch. Start a sketch on the base of the side plate. Draw a square using the center rectangle tool. Change all of these lines to construction lines. Then, draw five different circles, one at each of the four corners and then another in the center of the rectangle. Select all of the circles while holding the shift key and add the equal relation to them. Then, dimension one of them to being 0 0.196 inches. At IFI, they use standard hole punch sizes to create the circular holes in our parts. All of our holes must be one of the standard hole punch sizes. You can find a list of these standard hole sizes in the CAD drop box. Add dimensions to the width and height of the square. On Simbot Evolution, the dimensions were 1.125 inches wide and 1 inch tall. We can use that same dimension for this drivetrain. Now we need to add this to a block so we can insert it and repeat these holes. Right click in the blank space on the open tab. A list of tool categories comes up. Click on the blocks category to make the menu pop up. Click on the make block button to create a new block. Then click on all of the entities you would like to be added to the block. I will be adding all of the construction lines and the circles to the block. Press the check mark to finish making the block. Now, save this block in a folder so we can use it later. If you were using this block in a real robot where it would be shared in the Dropbox, save it in your assemblies folder in the Dropbox. I will also recommend making a new folder called Blocks to keep them separate from all the parts and assemblies. Now that your block has been created and saved, we can add more of them to the sketch. To add more, click on the Insert Block button in the Blocks menu. Find the block you saved before and then add it. There should be three blocks in your sketch for the axles. Now we need to define their position. Since we already defined the location of the axles in our layout sketch, we can use that sketch to define the location of the block in the sketch. In the feature tree, expand the base plate feature and right click on the sketch. Click on the show button to make it visible for you to use. Add a relation to the middle of the center circle of the block to the center mark and the wheel in the sketch. Now we can adjust all of the locations of the axles from that one layout sketch instead of using this sketch. Close this sketch when you are done adding the coincident relations to the blocks. And then you can cut extrude the sketch through all. Close the feature and your cut extrude will be added to the feature tree. The axle supports will be made in a later video. In the next video, we will add a few more important holes for the drivetrain.